There's something about our ancient trees that inspires wonder. They are rich in history and culture. Ancient trees and the historic wood pasture, parkland, orchards and hedgerows they inhabit are some of the most exciting and important habitats for wildlife. But they are under threat. There are over 2,000 species of fungi, invertebrates, bats, lichen and moss that share a mutually beneficial relationship with trees. In this series of short films, we talk briefly about the ecology of trees and wood pasture and some of the species that share their life cycle. We offer general advice on how to manage this special habitat with these species in mind and pointers to further information and expert advice. We hope that these films will improve understanding and that you will join with us in managing this habitat for the benefit of these species. By working together, we can ensure that they'll be around for future generations. There are 17 species of bat that breed in the UK. All of them are protected. Remarkably, all the bat species we have here in the UK can live for as long as 30 years, yet they only give birth to one young every year. All of our bat species are nocturnal. They use echolocation, reflected sound, to navigate at night and also to find their prey. They only eat insects. These bats hibernate during the winter and they use the same roosting sites year after year. The loss of suitable trees for roosting, foraging habitats and connectivity in the countryside has contributed to their decline. Noctule, Barberstall and Beckstein's bats use tree roosts all year round. The Noctule is the largest British bat and is usually the first to appear in the evening. It forages over open habitats like wood pasture and parkland, flying high above the trees, taking steep dives down to catch insects. It will roost, breed and hibernate in trees, living mainly in rot and woodpecker holes. The Beckstein's bat favours broad-leaved woodland, veteran trees and dead wood. Another woodland specialist that will roost, breed and hibernate in tree crevices and cavities. It forages for moths within woodlands with a closed canopy and dense native understory. The Barberstall is found in broadleaf woodlands and uses older trees, veteran trees and dead wood. A woodland specialist that typically roosts, breeds and hibernates in tree crevices and cavities, commonly behind lifted bark. It forages for moths in woodlands, wood pastures, parklands and alongside hedgerows and tree lines. All bats are European protected species, so they need to be considered before any works are carried out. You have to take special care not to disturb or damage their roosts in any way. Appropriate surveys should also be carried out prior to any works. It's also important to follow good practice, so keep a record of your surveys and any decisions you make. When managing for bats, minimum intervention should always be a priority. Retain any ancient and veteran trees for roosts and feeding opportunities, along with areas of dense understory and closed canopy for foraging. Clearly mark and protect any trees that contain confirmed bat roosts and avoid work around confirmed roosts to limit disturbance. March, April and September, October are the least vulnerable time for bats. This is when they're highly mobile and don't have any dependent young although this can vary according to location and species. Retain potential roost trees and ensure a succession of continuity of roosts for the future. A variety of trees of different ages ensures a succession of mature and ancient trees in different stages of natural decay, providing suitable roosting sites long term. Retain standing and fallen dead wood. For some species like Barberstiles and Beckstein's bats, Frequent roost switching by the whole colony has been recorded. This really highlights the importance of having lots of roosting sites within the territory. Most bats are reluctant to leave the cover and protection of tree lines, hedgerows and edge habitat as they move between their roosting grounds and their foraging sites. Protect, maintain and enhance existing networks of mature hedgerows, tree lines, woodlands, scrub, meadows and wetlands. Connectivity to the wider landscape is important to avoid isolation and to ensure there are suitable wildlife corridors. Linear landscape features, such as hedges, shelter belts, rows of trees along water bodies and wooden edges, will link roosting and foraging grounds. Ensure all of these are unlit. Leave overhanging branches and shrubs to provide cover for bats. Ensure that potential roost trees do not become exposed to avoid changing the conditions around them. Create scallops and bays along edges and rides for shelter and increased food supply.
The planting of nectaric shrubs will also provide lots of foraging opportunities for bats. Create or protect water features as they support a greater diversity of insects. Native broadleaf trees and shrubs grown alongside water bodies will improve foraging habitats and also habitat diversity.